All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the speed of a four terabyte Samsung 9100 Pro SSD once it has depleted its SLC cache, or to be more precise in this instance, pseudo SLC or PSLC. So basically, I want to show you what the speed of the SSD is truly like once it is directly writing to its TLC. C NAND or its long term storage. Now, just quickly, let me just show you here. There is the SSD there. Now, this particular SSD is with inside of a Testmart TBE X5 Max, which is a Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. Now, the data that I will be transferring to the Samsung SSD is going to come from a RAID, and that RAID consists of two a cases tb501 pro enclosures and both of those have got four terabyte sn850x ssds by western digital with inside of them so if i just come back here there's the eight terabyte raid there with the western digis in it and then there is the test smart enclosure with the samsung in it now just quickly if i just show you the SSD here has got four terabytes available, so it's empty as we can see. And as far as the folder being transferred over is concerned, that is a one million megabytes in size, so it's one terabyte for the folder. Now, to be clear, what I'm not going to do in this video is to show you the fastest speed. Now, that's not me being sneaky or anything. That's only because there is another video that I'm doing right now which shows you all of that information about the Samsung inside of the Test Smart enclosure. So, for anybody who is interested in what is actually the fastest Thunderbolt 5 SSD that you can possibly buy at the moment then there will be a link to that in the video description below now the other thing that I'm going to be able to do here is to give ourselves an idea of when the SLC or pseudo SLC runs out because we should be able to see that from these numbers here so right now we think we've, well, we've got four gigabytes on the clock so basically nothing on the clock as it were anyway what I'm going to do is just start dragging this folder over okay now like I say I'm not going to show you this fast speed right now because I don't want to let the cat out of the bag for the other video however as we're going to see here with this graph it's unlikely that we will see this like you know these graphs like change at all during this first terabyte of data being transferred so what I'm going to do now is just to speed up through this until I've gotten past this first dump of the one terabyte folder. Okay, so that first folder is now transferred over. Let me just change the name of the folder and I'm going to start dragging this folder over. Now I will talk mostly through this now because it's likely to drop down soon. And there we go, it's dropped now. And that dropped at about 1.04 terabytes. So it would appear then, if you were to do a load of data in one go, you're going to be able to do roughly 1.04 terabytes using the SLC cache. However, as we can now see at this low speed, and if I unblur this, we are getting 1.65 gigabytes per second for the right to the test smart drive here which has obviously got the samsung in so right now what we're seeing is the true speed of the ssd once it has depleted its pseudo slc cache and that is like a lot lot lower than what its maximum speed is like i say there is a video that will show you its maximum speed but we can clearly see that here as well from this particular graph just how much that that has dropped now what i'm going to do is let this go through and i'm going to then transfer another terabyte and let's just see if it stays at that level there or if indeed if it changes any further or if at any point maybe some of the slc is actually retrieved and it might go back up in little spits and stuff like that however one thing i just want to explain right now this particular ssd is obviously pcie gen 5 so if you were to put this inside of say a windows computer that are pcie 
Gen 5 M.2 slots, you're going to get a much faster speed out of it than what we will do when it's inside of something like a Thunderbolt enclosure. And the reason why is because the Thunderbolt enclosure, even Thunderbolt 5, is going to be limiting the speed to PCIe Gen 4 as far as the actual bandwidth is concerned. However, when we drop down to this speed here, now this like 1.5, 1.6, whatever it is, this is actually the true speed and we can definitely measure that with it when it's inside of the Thunderbolt enclosure because that is now a lot lower than the maximum speed of the PCIe bandwidth from the enclosure. So some people out there might be thinking, well, hold on, maybe this speed might be faster if it were connected directly into say a Windows like computer on the motherboard with a P PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slot will know because we have already managed to drop below the maximum bandwidth of the enclosure now. So this speed here is exactly what you definitely would see when you are inside of any system which has got a PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slot on it. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just speed up through this and let's see if we can see any variations in this speed and then once the one terabyte folder has been moved over, I will try another one terabyte folder. Okay, the folder's moved over there, so I'm just going to retitle it. And I'm going to drag another one terabyte over. Let's see what happens. And immediately we'll see a really quick spike there. Now that quick spike is probably because the amount of time that it took me to like, you know, retitle and then swap over with another folder. Part of the SLC cache may have kind of like refreshed itself there or the pseudo SLC cache may have re re refreshed itself. However, if you're doing like long sustained writes, this is exactly the performance that you will see regardless of what this SSD is put with inside of. Now what I will do, I will let this continue for a little bit longer just so that we can definitely see what's going on as far as the speed is concerned because at this point, we're definitely not gonna see it like get any better or anything then what i will do i will do a pause on it as well and just leave the ssd for a while just to see what happens when we leave it for a bit to see what its slc cache will do when it retrieves itself or when it recovers and see how much more extra speed we would get out of it if we just leave it for a while so it can recover itself but nonetheless what i'm going to do is just speed up through this for a little bit longer and we're probably just going to see that these numbers here just won't really change that much again. Actually, what I will do is to copy the entire folder over, and then in that instance, I will have written three terabytes worth of data to the Samsung. Now, of course, it wasn't all done, say, in one go per se, because I'm doing this in like, you know, one terabyte chunks. However, this will definitely give you a really good idea as to what the performance is like during these first three terabytes. And then at that point, what I'm going to do is to allow the SSD just to settle itself and just rest for a while to see what happens with the SLC when I do a fourth data transfer over. So like I say, I will just speed up through this until this folder has now been written over. Okay, so that folder has now been written over. And basically what we've seen there is like speed somewhere between 1.6 to 1.8 uh, gigabytes per second. And obviously they fluctuate a little bit and stuff, but that's roughly there about, you know, the kind of boundaries that we're looking at for the upper and lower speeds during these like, you know, data transfers. Now what I'm going to do here is to get this stopwatch. Now I'm just gonna start this. So basically what I'm doing here now, I'm just gonna be ultra fair and I'm gonna give it 10 minutes before I do another data dump. Now the reason for doing this is because when you're not actually like just hammering the SSD with tons and tons of continuous data, 
it will in most instances allow most SSDs to recover some of their SLC cache or pseudo SLC cache in this instance and that should allow us to get a bit more of a like a peak write speed again so even though I've already written three terabytes of data to the SSD it's going to be interesting just to see with that last terabyte whether it will actually refresh its SLC or pseudo SLC to any great degree to give us any more of a speed bump when I do the next data transfer over so what I'm going to do now is to speed up through this until that stopwatch gets past 10 minutes and then that will also give me enough time to go make a cup of tea Okay, so as we can see here then, I've let the SSD settle there for like 10 minutes plus. Now what I'm going to do quickly is, let's see, hold on. I just need to, I'm going to see what size this folder is. What it is, I can't copy over another one terabyte because it will be slightly too big. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete that folder there. Then I'm going to reduce the total uh, folder size for the main folder down to 900 gigabytes. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So, sorry, 900,000 gigabytes. Okay, so there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is drag the folder ho over. And hopefully what we should see is like we get a much faster speed again. That's if the SLC cache has managed to refresh itself or the pseudo SLC. So let's just see what happens here. Oops, hold on. Already exists, of course it does. <laughs> let me just retitle that one. Let me just stop that stopwatch. We don't need it anymore. So let me do this now and boom. Let's see. Um... Okay, so we've gone right back up to the fastest speed possible there. Again, I'm just blaring this out just so that like, I don't let the cat out of the bag for this other video that I'm doing. Now let's just see how long this holds for. It's definitely not going to hold for like, you know, the full length of the folder, or at least I don't think it will, although I could be pleasantly surprised. Um, but that's definitely at its fastest speed again right now. Okay. Well, that's interesting because I thought that that might have run out a lot sooner than what it has done, and it has not. Um, right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of like pad out for time in here because I don't know if it's worth speeding through this because I don't know when it's going to drop that level there from the SLC or the pseudo SLC back to the TLC. Hold on. Right, do you know what? I will speed up a little bit through it. It's only got another minute to go, but I will speed up through. And then if it drops it, SLC, oh, there we go, it's dropped. Okay, so that probably dropped after about 400 gigabytes there, which actually, to be really dead honest, I'm totally surprised. However, <laughs> oh, wait there, it's, it's TLC speed has gone really low now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. What I was saying there is that I was really impressed with how long it sustained its highest um, speed for because the SLC had recovered enough for there about maybe just over 400 gigabytes worth of data transferring. However, as we can see now, um, that sustain speed there has dropped right down to just over a gigabyte per second. So whereas earlier on we were seeing between 1.6 to 1.8, that's now dropped right down. So maybe if I'd have had, say, like one fold with four terabytes in and I started moving it. I think this is the performance we might have seen once we started getting maybe into, say, the last 500 gig or so of remaining like storage on the Samsung. In fact, what I will do, I'll just speed up through this bit because I'm interested to see what this does. Let's just see if it goes down or up any further during the remainder of this data being transferred over.
Oh, actually, I'm just going to come back in here because we seem to have got a little bit of an uplift there as well. Okay, so that's gone back to what the previous or thereabouts what the previous level was. So in spite of the fact that we are now towards the very last part of the SSD, as it were, or at least, you know, we're, we're, we're towards like it being completely full. It has actually lifted its speed back up there. Again, this speed is nowhere near as impressive as its fastest speed. But again, though, that's actually slightly interesting what it's just done there. Anyway, what I will do is continue to fast forward until it's actually transferred the whole folder over. Okay, so just coming up to the end of this, and again, it's still sustaining that bitrate again, which is, I think, is probably impressive in one way, although nowhere near as impressive as its fastest speed. Now, let me just double check. Let's see, so this should be about 3.9. There we go, yeah, so 3.9 terabytes have been used there. So it was like roughly 100 uh, gigabytes short of filling it up. I just didn't want to do the whole folder because I don't think it would have fitted uh, as far as the entire terabyte is concerned. But as we can see here anyway, what I've done is to transfer a load of data sequentially and stuff and also give it that pause so that we could see exactly what the SLC performance was going to be like once it was ready rested or the pseudo SLC. Now for anybody who might be thinking that some of these results may have been due to thermal throttling, that most certainly isn't the case. What it is, I've been monitoring the speed of, uh, sorry, I've been monitoring the temperature of the enclosure that I've been using here and it is an active enclosure and the SSD is nowhere near thermal throttling. So what we have seen in this video then is the true TLC performance of this particular SSD. Anyway, hopefully this has been pretty useful or interesting to some people out there who are into this kind of thing because I'm most certainly into this kind of thing, which is the reason why I've done the video. Now for anybody who's interested in its maximum speed for the 4 terabyte Samsung 9100 Pro with inside of this test smart enclosure you definitely want to have a look at the video to do with that and once again there will be a link to that in the video description anyway that will do it for this video and there will be a bunch of links in the video description to the stuff that I've used in the video and for anybody interested in this test smart enclosure I've also got a 15% discount code for for that as well now if you've liked the video or if you found it interesting or insightful in any way please do give it a thumbs up and a sub to the channel will be absolutely tremendous i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now